The film that inspired me first was probably Star Wars. It really exploded my imagination. Until then, I had lived in sort of the literary worlds of like Ray Bradbury and Robert Heinlein, but they just felt like these vague theaters of the mind. And then Star Wars came along and showed me that space opera could live in a cinematic space. And, uh, and that stuck with me for a while until the same year Close Encounters of the Third Kind came out. And that really changed my mind on how storytelling works. And I made my, uh, I made my, my path forward as a writer from that. Not necessarily life-changing, but two stories opened up my mind on how storytelling can work. Uh, I saw two movies within a year of each other, uh, and I was so hungry to see them that I faked being a reporter to get into screenings of them uh, because they weren't showing anywhere in my town. Uh, so I, I faked being a critic to see Run Lola Run and then Memento. And both of those movies play with time and showed new aspects of storytelling. And I think that nonlinear non form of storytelling really opened things up in me. I have to tell new stories because the world keeps changing and we need to speak to the changes. We need to, to address them and spotlight them. And I worry that our society is becoming more and more frustrated by change. Uh, and it's not so much that they don't even want to change, it's more that they want to go back to a time that can't be recaptured. And so I think we need to put more effort in to what the world is becoming and less into what it was. Having written. For me, the most challenging part is getting started. I feel that once I have something, I have more confidence that I can see it through to a messy conclusion, but I can at least get There's something about the blank page that allows your inner judge to come out and criticize something before you write it. Whereas if you already have words on the page, uh, you can hit the ground running. You know, I try to be as organized as possible on that and, you know, give myself uh, the guardrails and, you know, a process to go through. And that works some of the time, uh, but often, you're trying to trick your own brain into doing something that it's pretty smart about. Like, it's very aware of what you're trying to do. <laughs> so, uh, sometimes I have to fight the paper tiger another way. I get inspired by things that I'm very passionate about, I fall in love with, or issues that I get very angry about. It's one of those two emotions. Uh, and so uh, that can happen by reading the news, or reading a novel, or listening to music. Um, it can come from any source, and often it can come from a most unexpected source. Read as much as you write, and write often. It's important to feed the engine, you know, feed the muse, but it's also important to develop the habit that you're going to have for the rest of your career. Oftentimes I've found new screenwriters who have completed one screenplay and they look at it as a lottery ticket. You know, they feel like they've hit a finish line when really it's a business card. Right now it would be Oshinoko, but what we do in the shadows, Succession, chocolate covered gummy bears, donuts, cheese and I don't agree. I listen to trailer music. Like, there's a whole niche market that composers create score for, uh, potentially, for, for movie trailers. And therefore, it, it doesn't have a distinct association with something that's already been made that my brain could start to like go down another path. It's, it's kind of opened up to the possibility of whatever it is that I'm making. Both. I also like both dogs and cats. So I don't know. I, I'm, I'm uh, an omnivore. 
uh, Jennifer Kent, the Babadook, is amazing. Uh, Barry Jenkins, Moonlight, oh my god, beautiful. Uh, but then Michael Brandt and Derek Haas uh, have a script called The Courier that never got made. Phenomenal, entertaining. I laugh so hard every time I read it.